We think about retention of staff all the time because obviously if you lose your staff you have to spend a lot of time and money recruiting new staff. Schooling is a people business and um, in any aspect of retention uh, of staff the first bit for me is getting the basics right. Over the last seven years 250,000 qualified teachers have left the teaching profession. Cleave School is a large secondary school in Cheltenham. The governors and head teacher think very carefully about retention and have put six key strategies in place to retain effective staff. Susan Wakeford is the chair of governors and was the 2008 West of England Governor of the Year. I think that the most important thing in the school, is, aside of the pupils of course, is, is the staff. The staff make um, the difference to everything that you do. The quality of those people is what impacts the education of the children. At every personnel meeting we um, talk about new appointments and any potential staff changes. So we're normally well aware of, um, of what might be happening so that we're in a good position to discuss what we can, what we can do to either keep staff or, or to help them if actually the best thing for them is to move on to another school and, and get a, a position of responsibility that actually isn't available at Cleve. It's the beginning of the new school year and Cleve School has 19 new teachers starting the term. For new staff and particularly NQTs, the start of the term can be a daunting time. To tackle this, governors and senior management have put in place a buddy system to help out new teachers. I need to take it away and just read through it properly yeah. to check that you are giving the marks correctly for exactly what they've said. People arrive into a job and usually you grow into a job. You don't come to a new job already experienced in it. You're moving on to the next level up. Um, so you're arriving fresh with no experience usually and therefore somebody who's in the system understands the school, understands what we're trying to achieve and our, our targets and everything else. That person can help you um, um, adapt more quickly into this new environment. All new members of staff are teamed up with another member of staff and it it's may be well... someone out of the department as well yes. so that if you've got a, a situation that you want to deal with it's sometimes better to talk someone away from your department so you can air any problems that might be arising. And, and likewise, you know, if it's a new head of department who's coming into the school, they're teamed up with another head of department so that they've got similar issues going on, but they can talk about it in an environment outside the department. And it's then from that buddy system where kind of the social networks start to grow mm. very, very quickly within the school. Having um, Ali as my mentor has been invaluable. Like if I should uh, bump into her on my lunch break or after school or first thing in the morning, um, she's very, been very kind as well, I've also got her mobile number, so I've been really concerned about something, having her out of school, not all the time though. Um, and she's always stopped whatever she might be doing and she's always given me advice and support when I've needed it, which has been really useful. My NQT year would not have been so smooth if I hadn't had Ali there making it all so um, placid for me. I think it's really vital that when you start in a new school, particularly one like this, which is a large school, we have something like 100 teachers and probably 80, possibly more, support staff now. That's a big community to come into, so you could, you could potentially feel quite lost um, as, a, as a new member of staff, and I think having somebody special um, who looks out for you and is friends with you actually just makes people feel more welcome. Professional development and promotion are important aspects of retaining good staff members. The governors at Cleve School make it a priority to promote those who are doing well and to give them more responsibility. Carol Cole has been given an acting deputy head position at the age of just 32. So Carol, how's it been going over the last couple of weeks since you've taken over as a deputy, it's not exactly been an easy start. No, it's been quite busy, it has to be said. And Professional it's... development for all staff is absolutely vital. And if you have young staff coming into school, it's usually obvious pretty early on which members of staff um, have potential to go as far as head of department, assistant head, deputy head. I've been here for 11 years and I can't see myself wanting to move very soon. Um, and that's common with a lot of members of staff. Um, people don't really want to move on because actually they're fulfilled in their career here, they're supported in their career, they don't go stagnant because we're always moving and always changing and the people around them makes it a really fantastic working atmosphere. She's um, clearly somebody who's benefited from the, uh, our thinking that you need to have steps in place. If we hadn't had those steps in place, 
Carol would, would have been not lost the system. She'd be in some other school, giving them the benefit of all her expertise. But we've kept her here. Feeling part of the team is vital in keeping up staff morale and in retaining staff who then feel close to their colleagues. We have a number of activities that are whole school staff all together. So every day there's a briefing. We have activities during the year, whole school events, celebration activities. And in every department area, we have a department base where they all work. They meet there, they have coffee facilities there. They can leave their work out, they can share resources. And that's a place where people come in the morning, and just dump their stuff and feel this is my work base. This is the maths room that is just for maths uh, teaching staff. It's very good to build the team. Every other Friday we always have our lunch together and one of the department will actually bring in lunch for everyone else as well. And we take it in turns to do that. And I think it's brilliant to have this own separate space. It encourages everybody to get together and talk about the, the work that we're doing, where we're up to in our planning, where we're up to in our marking, what we're teaching this afternoon. Um, and also, if something's not gone very well, to go and talk to somebody about it straight away. Having a strong team was crucial for the languages department when one of the teachers wanted to go on a teacher exchange for three months. And I weigh, yeah? So you can use miso and you can use peso. We do a Spanish exchange to Logroño in Spain with the year 11s every year. And the year previously, I was contacted by a Spanish teacher I met out there who asked if I'd be interested in doing a teacher exchange. And I thought, ooh. Sounds a good idea. So I approached Alan, the head teacher. The things I think about as a head are what is it this person needs for their own professional development and their own their own well-being and the future. And what does the school need? Um, and are there benefits for the school? What are the risks to the school? And that becomes a, a, a big weighing up exercise. And I would always talk to governors about that. The personnel committee spent a, a long time discussing this issue. And for um, exam classes in particular, this was quite a difficult decision to take. Probably the thing that made us go with agreeing to let her go was that the language department as a whole was very supportive of her doing this and they were willing to actually cover her lessons and um, where, where we needed to absolutely make sure that the syllabus, the curriculum was being taught for the exam classes, they were willing to put in the extra support to make sure that the students had everything they needed. The obvious benefits are that they are refreshing, um, refreshing of her, her language. Um, it'll be re-establishing contacts in the country, so we, which we, we can then use. And also there's somebody who's been in the school for a fair number of years, who's at a point in her career where she wants to stay where she is, and needs some, some high points. I had a fantastic time. I really got back to basics with my language again. When I got back, I was just really thankful that the school had let me do this and the governors as well. Um, I thanked them personally and hopefully it's, it's had benefits in, in the results with the kids as well. Flexible working hours are another important strategy to keep teachers happy. Jane Sassanow is head of art. She wanted more flexible hours so she could develop her own artwork and printing away from the classroom. I've been at Cleve for 18 years, started off as an NQT in the art department and have gradually uh, evolved different roles within the school and I've ended up now as head of art. And I've always loved my subject and really enjoy inspiring young people but most of the creative process goes into preparing lessons and resources and delivering and facilitating what they do as opposed to really developing my own personal style and my own interests. She's a very good artist. Her own art's taken a back seat over the years while she's been a teacher. Um, now that she's getting a point in her life where she would like to try and develop her own work, um, her choices are, do I carry on working and keep that side of my life denied or do I stop work as a teacher and begin this new aspect of my life? So she came to see me and um, I think we want to keep Jane, she's a fantastic head of department and for a very small um, um, bit of flexibility on behalf of the school, she can begin to develop that side of her life and we retain her in her capacity as a leader in the school. If a member of staff um, asks to work part time, then by law we're obliged to consider that request. We obviously have to balance the needs of the school and the needs of the member of staff, but if they're a good teacher and we can accommodate that, that part-time working, then we always try to do so. Now why might they think that it was the other? And Cleve makes a point of being particularly flexible for new parents. I was off school for a total of 15 months um, because 12 months of that I was on maternity leave and three months of that I was off because I had problems in my pregnancy so I had to leave school early. 
the school was really accommodating and when I went to see the head and just explained that I'm really sorry but I've got to leave today <laughs> rather than in uh, three months time he was really lovely and he said look you've got to put your family first as my pregnancy um, became more advanced um, they made sure uh, that I was very very close my office was very very close to the rooms that I was going to teach in they moved students to classrooms closer to me so that I didn't have so far to walk and that I certainly didn't have to climb upstairs or carry anything particularly heavy we were operating a two-week timetable and we realized when a member of staff raised it with us that this made her childcare arrangements very difficult so we now operate a one-week timetable so a third of the population was wiped out it's a huge amount when i came back to school initially i came back for four days a week and they said that i didn't have to have a tutor group so that was really really good because some mornings my daughter would be you know ill or something and it was just nice just thinking oh well i don't have to rush i can just get in you know, for first lesson rather than thinking I had to get in for half past eight. So I, it might sound silly, but just those few minutes really made a difference. Head teacher Alan McConaughey has a close relationship with Susan and their united opinion on retention enables the governors to find creative solutions to sometimes tricky problems. I think governors are critical to the whole process of retention. Their attitudes to looking after staff, supporting staff, um, and the performance management of staff are, are very important. It shouldn't be just one person who decides what the school will do that helps staff to feel we're part of some organisation that cares for me. The head is the um, senior member of staff on the personnel committee because he obviously thinks that staffing is uh, the most important thing really to get right in the school. You work hard to get the right people, to get good people. And once you've got good people, you want to grow those people to be very effective. And it's much, much better to keep the ones you've got than trying to replace them with somebody else who's got to work their way into the system. And Cleve's flexible approach to working conditions is now extending to Alan's position as head teacher. I've been a head teacher now for almost 18 years. I think I have gained something over those years and have something to offer and want to do other things in the education service. The way the governors handled this was um, they were very clear about what their priorities were, and their priorities are the good of the school. Those sorts of decisions are, are not easy ones to make because as governors, I think in this case, the needs of the school are actually the ones you have to consider first. You have a responsibility to the head, but you have a very, very big responsibility to the pupils, the parents and the rest of the staff. And we felt that what the head would gain and what Cleve would gain outweighed any disadvantages. We've appointed an associate head teacher who will do the day-to-day -day 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 work of the school in consultation with me, I remain head of the school and doing all the things that I would normally do, with the exception of some day-to-day uh, -day work. It, it made me feel very, uh, very cared for and very supported when they, they, they were saying all the nice things that they say, we want to keep you here, please. And that, that gives you a real boost. Today, Susan is providing tea and cake for staff to celebrate the school's successful GCSE results. I've come into school today to talk to the staff and say thank you for the way that they've worked for the students over the last couple of weeks and they've done an enormous amount for the students and I just wanted to say a personal thank you to them and I think it's really important to say thank you because I think we all appreciate people saying thank you to us. I, I know I do and I think probably we don't do it often enough so I try very hard to do it whenever there's a good reason to do so.